Dr. Anand. Uh, I formally welcome you all to this first technical session of the day. A tone has already been set for all of us to start with this technical session. And we have amongst us uh, Dr. Pankaj Madan. Uh, he <laughs> is a practicing professor and business analyst. Uh, let me introduce formally uh, Dr. Pankaj Madan uh, to all of you before starting with this technical session. Uh, Dr. Pankaj Madan is multidisciplinary academician with degree in production engineering, management, web technology, and quality management. He is CMI level five certified academic leader, and his areas of interest are decision sciences and digital business. Presently, he is dean faculty of engineering and is former dean of faculty of management and faculty of education at Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyale Haridwar. Before turning to academia. Dr. Madan had also worked with two reputed engineering companies for four years. Dr. Madan was director at College of Engineering, Roorkee, during 2009 and 10. In the past, he had taught at University of Southern Queensland in Dubai and has been visiting professor to Shaoxing University, China, and the other famous B schools in Southern America, Centrum Catholica, University of Peru, also University of Tartu in Estonia, Europe, He's also listed as premium educator with Harvard Business School Publishing, Boston. He's an award winner of B School Excellence Award in Best Teacher of Operations Management category. In 2016, Dr. Madan created an MHRD EPG Patshala course on quantitative techniques. He has already authored 12 books, supervised 15 PhD scholars, and one of his books also got listed among best sellers of India today, Book Club. He has got conducted more than 500 workshops and training programs, and his scholarly articles are listed at scopus.com and ResearchGate as well. He is associated with 15 universities nationally and internationally and other dignified state institutions like Public Service Commission. Dr. Madan is a proud member of AOM, IMA, and CSI, and is professionally linked with many corporate bodies. So without any delay, I would request our worthy principal, Dr. Vishal Kumar, to kindly formally welcome Dr. Mm -hmm. Madan. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Linu. Resource person of today, Professor Pankaj Madan, Dean School of Business Studies and Professor at Gurukul Kangri University, Haridwar. And uh, my very close mentor, friend, and colleague. Uh, I would say Professor Madan is truly an international faculty. So we met in the year 2014. And since then, I have uh, got the opportunity to jointly, uh, we did some projects and uh, in the EPG part, Salah. So, uh, he was allotted the you know duty of uh, developing the modules of quantitative techniques and he did his job very well as uh, you know he has conducted many uh, you know workshops in the india as well as uh, in abroad and uh, i would say uh, he's the right person to deliberate on the topic designing and delivery of case studies so I extend a sincere and red carpet welcome to such a luminary person and renowned academician, Professor Pankaj Madan. So not wasting much time between you and the participants. So I request you, sir, to start your deliberation. So before starting the uh, session, I would also recognize that uh, Professor Geeta Bansal from University School of Open Learning, Punjab University, Chandigarh, she has also joined the session. So I welcome you, ma'am, also. And uh, since the campuses are opening, so we would like to have you in the campus also sometime. So Professor Pankaj Madan, you can start your session. Thank you so much. Once again, uh, please accept my uh, sincere and warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure you. indeed you, for sir. me as well. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, yeah, sir, please. Yeah, thank you, Professor Vishal. Respected uh, Professor Ma'am Suri and ma'am uh, who have uh, introduced me and given such a wonderful 
introduction of mine. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for inviting me for addressing such a respected gathering here. Although it's virtual, but we know it's a time for now virtual interactions and it is as real as now physical interactions. Today we'll be talking about uh, the case studies and uh, let me share my content. But uh, whatever I have learned by teaching in uh, six different countries and six foreign universities and doing workshops in India and abroad. So whatever my learning from there or whatever I have learned from Howard Business School, I'll be sharing today. I think the participants should thank uh, the organizers and especially Professor Vishal because if we do this kind of workshop, international workshop on this, it costs a lot and it is the honor of uh, means it's it's honor for all the participants that uh, such workshop is being organized on the expense of the institution. And that is, I think, the main motive of any institution. Case study uh, is a methodology which actually is not designed by the management field or the business school. Rather, let me first share my. Is my uh, PPT visible? Not yet, sir. It's not visible yet, sir. We are waiting. Yeah, yeah. Just, just hold on. Just hold on. I think. Uh, I think have you stopped yeah, presenting from is. your side? I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, now it is, it is visible. visible. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. yes, sir. It is visible now. Okay. Okay. Now, what I was saying that this is actually not designed by the business school. Rather, this methodology, it's a very special kind of pedagogy, or you can say a methodology of teaching, which we have taken from law, law school. So uh, especially uh, there are different ways of dealing with the, the case studies, but I would focus upon a special technique which is uh, a patent of Harvard Business School, and they call it as participant-centered learning. It's a trademark. And this participant-centered learning kind of case methodology, teaching teaching methodology of uh, uh, this type, we, what we call as a participant-centered learning, they have taken from law school in Harvard. And as the name suggests that the student is in the center and the, the, the faculty is a facilitator for case discussion. But in the discussion, you will realize that it is like creating a movie or we can say there is one content known, known as choreographing a case. So as you can see in this, we'll be talking about that how uh, these cases will help in business management or what should be the instruction method, how to prepare a case, how to prepare teaching notes, or um, how to organize discussion in the class. So main focus will not be on uh, preparing a case or on the teaching notes, but the first step, there are two steps in this. When we talk about case teaching, there are two different steps. First step is that we should understand how to deal with the class because most of the time 
99 or 98 percent of the time we are not not using our own cases in the class especially in india i don't know uh, i could see uh, about 50 participants here in the group so i don't know that how many of you have created cases but this is for sure that you have been using cases or few of you may be new to the case methodology so even if you are experienced in using cases this will give a new dimension to that teaching there is no harm in attending this workshop if you have been teaching cases i'll i'll give a new dimension to that but if you are new to this uh, pedagogy of case teaching then definitely um, uh, you will enjoy this session so since i have two sessions today in the first session i'll be uh, talking more in detail about the case teaching case discussion or choreographing the case and in the second session it will be more of a uh, practical kind of session in which i have given you a case of assistant professor joe a very very interesting a very short case and uh, um, i have asked you a few questions and i have named them as assignment questions so there are two types of questions we'll we'll be talking about those two types of questions also assignment questions and discussion questions so in the second session we will be uh, making you to speak on you will be it will be totally interactive kind of session and except this uh, uh, i would like maximum participation from your side once i am done with my ppt with and you have a basic understanding uh, that uh, what the case method is and uh, uh, how to deal in the class then i think you will be able to perform better in the second session so at this stage uh, whatever content i have shown you uh, and yes and the second step i was talking about the case writing now case writing is again have two parts writing a case and writing a teaching notes that how to teach the case so that that workshop is different so we can do sometime second time or the next time about that uh, so at this stage i would request the organizers to open up the mics of all the participants and if they have any query or any any uh, question about or anything which is in their mind because few of you may be uh, teaching through case methodology so if you have anything to ask at, at this end and uh, uh telling me that sir this is to be added so i'll add that can we have a first interaction with anyone who has been using cases anyone from the participant side if you have been using cases kindly just uh, speak up and let me know your experience of uh, using cases and uh, what is your expectation from the workshop and then we need one speaker who can speak on that uh, they have not been using cases so what is their expectation from the workshop please participants it's your participants turn may now. yeah participants may raise their hands uh, those who want to speak up and which is a can uh, please help to so, unmute them yeah them one we need that who has been using cases yes please Anyone among the participants who would like to share that they have used the case study method uh, of teaching and they can share their experience with uh, all of us? Anyone or maybe more? Uh, they can raise their hands. Yeah. We have one. Kindly allow. Ma'am, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is Dr. Nirnal from Sri Aurobindo College. Uh, I have been using the case studies uh, in the subjects that I take and I'm taking the subject of managerial economics and taxation. So in both the subjects, uh, I normally take up uh, case studies uh, to teach uh, some concepts, maybe uh, of the peak load pricing. Uh, the concept could be from the demand forecasting. And uh, moreover, uh, personally also, as in the inaugural session, uh, uh, our worthy chairman has already mentioned that we have been writing case studies. So I have already written two case studies. One uh, was on the uh, company Decathlon, which is uh, which is a foreign company which is dealing in the sports goods, uh, pro, uh, sports goods. And the second uh, case study was on uh, the Maggie crisis. Nestle's Maggie crisis. So I have written two case studies also, and using the case study is a regular uh, practice in our college, sir. 
Uh, very nice, uh, Dr. Mindral. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your uh, two cases and telling that. And and uh, really, it's wonderful because uh, usually it is a uh, we can say uh, a notion or a misconception that using cases in teaching accounting is really difficult or teaching QT is really difficult. But believe me that uh, uh, she has already attained the highest uh, difficulty peak of case teaching when she is using uh, cases in teaching accounting or the finance subject or a quantitative subject. That's beautiful, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I think that uh, you can contribute a lot to the workshop. And this is again um, most wonderful that uh, and I appreciate that you have yourself written two cases and I wish you must have published these cases in uh, uh, with uh, the international publishers or national level publisher. As far as my knowledge, because uh, you see academic word is so high that there is no limit to the knowledge. But as far as my knowledge is there, so when we talk about case publishing, three international publishers are very, very renowned. One is uh, Howard Publishing, but normally they uh, publish cases only of Howard Business School, but rest of the cases which uh, they use, they usually buy from other uh, publishers, other international publisher. Second is IV and Emerald. They both take uh, cases from all over the world. So IV is Canadian and Emerald is from UK. And now all the three, they have offices in Mumbai. So uh, they, they invite cases from different professors. So all those who are into this workshop, after this workshop, or maybe, uh, maybe uh, some workshop which is on case writing after that, you can also publish your cases and uh, you can contribute to the uh, contribute to the academics. So moving on uh, now, we I, I may like to have an interaction like Dr. Minal, we we can have someone else, uh, some other professor who can uh, who has not used a case methodology as yet, and uh, he or she can uh, share uh, uh, that what is her ex his or her expectation from case methodology and how did they got inspired to use this methodology and you and attend this workshop. Please. <clears throat> Anyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Dr. Geeta Bansal here from Punjab University, Chandigarh, sir. Welcome, sir, as a manage, yeah, sir, as a, as a management student, we have been using the case study methodology a long time back, but as a teacher, we did not get much of the opportunity to use it because since we are in open school and we have a paucity of time and we do not have much time to discuss the case study methodology. So I am here to learn about how we can incorporate it in a short period of time. So this is one component which I am eagerly waiting to learn and to contribute towards my uh, students because we have a very good strength of students, say around 500 management students in MBA. Okay. So this is one thing which has been intriguing me for a while and uh, I was looking for it for a long time. And when this opportunity came, I just grabbed it. And, uh, you know, I was after Vishal sir <laughs> to get me enrolled into this. And I think he 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 went an extra mile to get me enrolled last night only. So I'm very thankful to sir for getting me here in. And I'm sure I'll take a lot and I'm going to incorporate it from this very semester, sir. Thank you. Uh, so thank much. you, Dr. Gita. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for showing such uh, an inspiration towards uh, uh, the case or liking towards the cases and your appetite for learning. That is important because you are uh, presently at a very nice position. And um, if you have a learning appetite at this position, that, that is, I think, wonderful and that creates a best teacher. So uh, when we talk about uh, uh, cases, uh, then uh, I think that it's it's there are two ways of teaching in management or commerce or the allied fields. One is that uh, that you invite industry people because it's a very applied kind of subject. You talk about commerce or management or economics, so we can see things happening around us. So there are two ways of uh, going with the class. One is that you invite industry people to the class and they do teaching in the class because they have experience of uh, banking or manufacturing or services or any other uh, industry. Now that is always not possible because 
they are busy or they don't have academic background or um, maximum time it is not possible. So what was the other way? And it is happening all around the world. It is not that it is only limited in India. But uh, what is the other way around? The other way around is that you create an environment or a situation in the class. And when we create an environment in the class for discussion on business or economics or commerce, then definitely that situation creation needs some tool. And that tool which creates the real life situation of a business in the class, we call it as a case study or a case method. Now, when we talk about a case study, we say that it's a real life situation which has been depicted or written by an academician or an industry plus academic collaboration is done and a professor uh, puts the whole situation in an academic way, although it's real, and compile the whole thing. And this compilation of that real life situation is known as a case. Now, the difference between the two is that this is this you are making the class learning by doing. Normally in the theoretical class, you are not making like doc, how Dr. Mirnal said that she has been putting the class on a particular situation of a balance sheet or uh, profits or losses and uh, asking the students, OK, this is the situation. This is the data. And now you have to find out this particular thing, this financial ratio you need to find out. And if we talk about uh, not only the finance, if we talk about HR or operations or marketing, then definitely we are asking people, people means the students or the participants, to inquire or to investigate based on the facts and figures that are given in the facts and figures that are given in the case. Now, what does it mean? It means that that your case actually should bring the real life facts and figure, the real life situation based on facts and figure in the class so that the students or the participants can give, can understand what exactly happened at that time in that situation in the, in, in the industry. Is this point clear? Now, when we and choosing a case again is an art. Because if you choose the right case for the right title, then I think 10% uh, or 15% of work is done. But one thing we should be uh, we should be clear about is that uh, the same case can be used in different subjects. Because the same case can give uh, idea about different aspects of uh, marketing or finance. Although we say that it's a core case of marketing or it's a core case of finance or it's a core case of HR, but still I would say that cases can be uh, cases can be uh, used with different dimensions. Now. <clears throat> The case is normally. Cases normally. Have both quantitative and qualitative evidences present in that, but the students they need to find out those evidences which support what which support arguments in place discussion. What you are doing, you are actually inviting arguments. And those arguments, arguments, but not fights. Please, there is a difference between argument and fight. So the statements which are based on facts and figures in which uh, one student puts his own thought with some fact and figure, his own thinking, but based on fact and figure, I'm again saying, then again, the other student has a different dimension of thinking, but he has his own view of uh, uh, looking at that particular situation. So uh, we invite both qualitative and COVID quantitative evidences for these arguments. Another beauty of uh, using the case method is that uh, normally 
when we invite people from uh, organization. So what happens is that uh, 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 that we, we, we get a person who is specialized only in operations or only in finance or he's working in accounting department or HR department. So uh, his knowledge may have a, 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 a microscopic view or even you are getting uh, students exposed to only one dimension. But when we talk about a case, so in one semester or in one year, you go across the industry, starting from service industry to manufacturing or um, to hospitality or consumer durable or FMCG. So you can use n number of cases in the class and you can give an exposure to the students, a great exposure to the students of different type of formation across the world. That is the beauty of using a case. Uh, in this, uh, you normally invite students to argue, to participate based on their expertise, experience or observations. But uh, normally when I do this kind of workshop, one question comes. Sir, uh, they usually ask a question. Uh, uh, sir, uh, normally in India, we don't have experienced students in the class. In foreign universities, sir, you are talking about something of a foreign business school where you have students from with five years, 10 years, 10 years of experience or at least two years of experience, even in IIMs, if you see. So they get students with uh, two years, three years of experience uh, in their MBA class. But normally in other business schools, uh, we don't, we get fresh students. But my dear students, my argument or my answer is that I know that these students are freshers, but if you see their family background, suppose there is some student whose father is a bank manager. Now, since his childhood, he has been listening through his ears each and everything about banking. And it becomes like an Abhimanyu that before birth, he was knowing so many things. But that's what I'm saying that maybe someone's brother is in LG, someone's brother is in Samsung or Hyundai or HUL or any other N number N, N company and hero and uh, then uh, uh, and they have been listening to their uh, sisters, brothers or their family talk for so many years and so many terminology, so many things. They get an experience based on listening, not based on observation. And they also get experience and I can understand that their contribution in the Indian class will not be as good as the contribution of a student who has uh, uh, been working in industry for three, four years or 10 years, and then he is leaving or she is leaving the study and coming for an MBA class. Normally that happens in a busy school, but it is for sure that although he don't have that kind of experience, but his family ground, background is definitely, will definitely be from some or the other industry. And based on his learning from his family, he can contribute in the class. And that is how, that is the hidden talent. And we call it as a peer-to-peer -peer learning, which is very, very, very important when we talk about the case methodology. And one thing uh, I may like to uh, address you that uh, whatever I am saying, uh, you have to use all these points in your next session. You will be teaching in the next session instead of me. You will be at my place. So I'll be asking you to teach. So now you have to uh, uh, means uh, use all these tools which I'm now sharing with you. Now uh, with this, uh, I would say that uh, uh, with the help of a case, you are making them think purposefully. And uh, it, is, uh, it is your duty to uh, open some kind of challenge you are working you will be working as a facilitator when you are teaching a case you are working as a facilitator in which uh, your art your art is that you initiate in such a manner that the discussion starts happening in the class if the discussion doesn't start 
it means that your case teaching is failing so if the discussion has started and the one student starts speaking second student starts speaking third student starts speaking then definitely your number of times of uh, contributing to the class will come down and a time will come that when you will keep silent and uh, only the students will be discussing among the class and if somebody ask a question sir how do you judge which is the best teaching uh, case teaching class i would say when you are quiet and only students are discussing among themselves that is the best case teaching class and that is what our role is as a case teacher uh you need to and for that uh, what you need to do is you need to provoke uh, an argumentative thinking means they, they they should come up with their arguments that why they think so and what what on what logic their their uh, argument is based so they have to come up with that logic with that formula with their fact or with that uh, figures now next point is that uh, in 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 the first mba i means if you are normally i say that you go for a text teaching in uh, bba don't go for case teaching in bba a plain graduation class uh, in management class if we talk about uh, the the first year uh, the first semester and the last semester there will be a huge difference between um, uh, between your case uh, learning your case learning means that how how you observe a case or even i would say that how your teaching class is going on there will be a difference between the first semester and the last semester and why because in 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 the, in the first semester uh, the students they are from they are freshers and they don't have uh, um, they are not so open because they have come from a graduate college and uh, which may not, they may they have not been exposed to the case methodology so they, they may have fear to speak they may have a fear of language usage they they or sometimes they have a fear when uh, when because in the college may be possible their their teacher may be very very strict and they may be saying okay keep quiet don't speak on keep be quiet i'll tell what is to be read so that kind of environment has to be changed and you need to encourage people and to leave their fear you have to encourage students to leave their fear and speak out and this fear will go slowly and steadily within different semesters so in the last uh, third semester or fourth semester you will realize that they have totally opened up and they are now very very argumentative and uh, they are coming with right logics and they are now enjoying really the case so uh, i will uh, if i say that you need to teach people that uh, like i have given you a case but i have not told you how to read that case and but in your class when you are giving cases so before that you have to tell them that how to prepare these cases and come prepared for a discussion so broadly uh, uh, you have to say that uh, they have to run through the paragraph uh, as far as possible and uh, um, uh, they have to when they are reading the case then they have to uh, look at the exhibits or some additional papers which are given with that and uh, they have to underline they have to highlight and uh, uh, they have to understand what is the basic issue in the case they have to highlight that and there if there are certain uh, arguments in that and if there are certain uh, hidden facts and figures they have to highlight that and then uh, sometimes in uh, uh, you have to tell the students that uh, you will be asking them that uh, uh, they have to act like some of the characters in the case and they should be prepared for that and sometimes you have to when i was saying that you have to choreograph a film or you have to choreograph a case i meant to say that uh, that uh, may be possible that uh, you may for in the first semester you may um, create a whole 
dramatic situation in a class in which uh, you will say that okay you will be the character a in the class you will be character b in the class you will be character c in the class so and you see teaching is an art so there is no limitation that how you deal with that case you know better your class you know better your case the only thing is compatibility that you want uh, that there should be maximum participation and for that uh, the the way of the, the way of teaching or the pedagogy is totally yours i am just giving you few, few hints only now after that you need to tell students that uh, you need to highlight what are the key problems in the case because case we say is something which is unresolved problem and that's why it has become a case like um, the 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 cases which go in the court in the law like in the normal courts because one party has its own argument the, they say that we are right other party says that we have this argument now both parties have their argument and then the judgment comes but the only difference between the uh, no, the real life cases and the business cases is that there is no idle answer to the business cases but yes different definitely there are the right answers i am not saying the idle answers but i would say that uh, uh, yes uh, you can say that okay based on the theory uh, this argument is more near to the uh, the 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 real problem solving or this argument is bit far or fundamentally it is not correct so this is how you can um, go with the cases when they come out with the real problems of the issue now you need to ask uh, um, and check whether the the student have really come out with the appropriate quantitative or qualitative analysis or not whether he has made right considerations or not and whether uh, he has developed uh, a right recommendation or support the analysis sometimes the students they keep on speaking without relevant without relevance to the subject or without relevant relevance to the facts and figures given in the case so that should not happen and you that is the art of teaching in the case that you avoid or discourage that kind of teaching now again before moving on i am again asking the organizers to open the uh, mic to uh, the participants and they can ask uh, questions up to what i have done as yet and also uh, i have given some uh, Uh, questions to you so i may like to um, uh, before the next session although i'll be asking about those questions but i think we can start with that uh, uh, the questions which i have given so shall we uh, so first is that uh, mm, you, whatever i have um, shared with you till this time if you have any question regarding that you can ask me sir may yeah. i yeah please uh sir uh, i just uh, feel that uh, you said that we should not start the case studies in graduate level at the graduation level but mm. i feel that uh, why not catch them young because these days the, st the students are very very smart and uh, we want to inculcate the learning the analytical skills and the problem solving skills in them so why not uh, start in the very beginning because uh, then the, the fear of in the first semester of mba and mcom those fears can also be you know uh, taken care of and they are already well versed with this methodology though we can start with small cases you know not very heavy cases so they can be i think i feel that they can be uh, you know sensitized about this methodology at the graduation level also but if you i mean i would I, like to hear I, from I, you I, like I, what are the disadvantages of that if yeah. if any yeah i agree that uh, there is no harm in that but that is my view point because uh, normally in india indian context what we consider as a case uh, even if you uh, see few of the cases which have been published uh, in the books you won't find them so relevant because uh, you uh, most of the cases are not actually really depicting 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 the situation they are not covering the facts and figures of the real situation but if you are really using good cases then the case length it usually varies from 
two pages to almost 20 pages. And on an average, uh, uh, based on my experience, I have seen that uh, good cases, they are of uh, almost six to eight pages. And uh, if you talk about their teaching notes, which you will be using before going to the class and you will be preparing based on the teaching notes. I don't know if you have been using teaching notes or not. So and uh, Dr. Minal must have made teaching notes because I'll after this workshop or even uh, I'll share with uh, Dr. Pooja or Dr. Vishal the case I have written of Patanjali and published with Emerald and which is being taught now all across the world. Uh, because most of you know Patanjali Yogpeet and Baba Ramdev and you have been um, there are so many queries that how he has his organization and he has grown so much in last few years only. So I have written about that <clears throat> and uh, so what I'm trying to say here is that uh, in that the graduation level uh, their basics because you see uh, the difference between the Indian students and foreign students that our students when they are coming to the post graduation they are still very fresh they don't have experience when when but uh, in foreign B schools they are from the industry because they have a culture that they, they study and they work also so when we talk about a graduation level they have come from school and uh, they they don't have that kind of background and at that moment i think that uh, teaching them the fundamentals of the basics of the subject is very very important whether it's of finance or commerce or economics and once their foundation is strong once otherwise what will happen that if their foundation is not strong, then their arguments will also not so logical. So that's what I am saying. But there is if you think that uh, your students are different from other students and they are able to catch up with the, the cases, uh, the real cases, what I'm talking about. And uh, um, you have a good source of uh, cases. You have a good bundle of cases in which the teaching notes are also there. And uh, um, then I think in the second year or third year of graduation, you may start with small cases, caselets. And uh, if you find that it is useful because uh, as per my understanding about uh, doing these workshops uh, in refresher courses uh, in different academic staff colleges, people said that, sir, when we started using cases, then students started saying that he's wasting time. And that that happens. Why? Because uh, there is the participation is less or the teacher is not prepared or he has been not been using the standard standard methodology of case teaching. He is just distributing the case and without uh, using the teaching notes that without understanding of what you mean by opening question. What is the difference between assignment question and a uh, and a discussion question? So once your preparation is also very strong the students are matured then i think the compatibility is good but still uh, if you want i think there is no harm in that have i answered your question ma'am thank you so much sir thank you yeah now uh, i have given few questions uh, to the participants and one of the question was that assistant professor joe is teaching which subject she was a teacher in which program so I may like to know your answer, please. Yes, among the participants, if somebody has an answer, uh, let me one of, one give. Of them yeah. Must have the answer. Yes, uh, uh, we can expect that. And yeah. before yeah. Uh, before we ask participants, I would just uh, moderate between your discussion and Geeta Ma'am's discussion. That yeah. uh, the way she said that uh, she was inquisitive about. Uh, if we can build up those decision making skills of uh, the uh, students at the time of graduation. So we have uh, graduate programs here and we have been using just a second. Sir. I think there is a lot of disturbance at the back end, so mm. I'll, I'll just avoid it. Yeah, so uh, we can invite uh, uh, the the participants. Uh, uh, there are two ways. Either you raise the hand, or I'll look into the uh, attendees' names and I'll ask that who will answer. Right. So we have uh, Dr. Dilraj Kaur with us, ma'am. Uh, can you just answer my first question? That 
uh, what was assistant professor jo what subjects uh, was she teaching and uh, she was she was teaching in which program good afternoon sir am i audible sir yeah ma'am you are audible yes sir she was teaching the operations mm -hmm. assistant professor jo she was teaching the operations operations management she was teaching yes Very sir nice. yes sir and what was the program the program was about the plant layout if i'm not wrong no, no. i mean to say programs are like bba is one program mba is one program uh, it's is about program. this is known as programs yeah okay okay so uh, if i'm not wrong uh, she was about to teach the mba students very nice ma'am i think we all should clap for uh, dr dilraj kaur very right answer so we'll continue with such questions and uh, i'll be asking any one of you about these questions and i'll also continue with my presentation and uh, i also asked about that uh, who answered the first question asked by assistant professor jo okay i'll wait for this answer uh, i know that uh, most of the teachers are very busy these days and because they have been engaged into online and now the offline teaching has started so i'll come up with this uh, i'll i'll be expecting this answer in the next 5 10 minutes so you can prepare for that uh, and uh, there are few very important uh, things which uh, i said that uh, uh, what you do uh, when uh, you discuss a case and one thing i pointed out that when you uh, make the case or when you although it's a very different kind of workshop means especially two days we devote only for case writing and we make you to write the case we make you to write the teaching notes the very very exhaustive kind of uh, uh, workshop is there but offline is better in that so still you should know about the teaching notes that uh, uh, and these are some of the mandatory things uh i'll be sharing you with my teaching notes and uh, just here only and i'll be showing you uh, that how these teaching notes are uh, what what the teaching notes contain because these teaching notes i have said that you will you should use uh, while teaching the cases at this junction i would like to uh, ask uh, some of you who have been using cases that uh, have you been using teaching notes for teaching cases any one of you yes sir we are using teaching notes yes so sir. these teaching notes are prepared by yourself or Ourselves. you have been using uh, no, sir the say that so the case studies that uh, we use from the maybe some books uh, or case banks uh, so for uh, for those case studies the uh, teaching notes are already given but as far as the case studies which we have developed on our own uh, so for those case studies also we have uh, given the proper teaching notes okay so ex except dr minal and if there is anyone else from the participant uh, who has been using cases and uh, if uh, we have dr uh, robin robin koshal so dr robin have you been uh, using uh, the cases and the teaching notes and are your teaching notes having all these things which i am showing on the slide the learning objectives the background reading dr robin are you there Dr Robin you are not audible Dr Robin or someone else can also speak till Dr Robin gets ready i think he has some audio issue uh, we have with us uh, uh, among the participants we have so many participants here we have ankita walia ma'am ankita walia ma'am so uh, ma'am ankita uh, uh, do you have uh, can you throw some light on the teaching notes which you have been using in your class madam ankita you can unmute yourself
Ankita ma'am, if you have an answer or you are ready with an answer, kindly unmute yourself and speak up. Otherwise, sir, let me apprise you with the, the fact that uh, at Sri Aurobindo College, we have been into the writing of case studies process. So in the past, mm -hmm. uh, most of the teachers at Sri Aurobindo College, uh, they have been writing the case studies with teaching notes and uh, some of them, they have got them published as well. So we have been into a practice of not only teaching through case studies, but also writing case studies. So many of the teachers, they might well, be very good. Yeah. That's wonderful. And what I would uh, like to do in this workshop is that, uh, like uh, I'm showing that the teaching notes must have the synopsis. These are before, because if you go for international publishing of a case, then your teaching note must have the synopsis. It should have the learning objective. Synopsis means it's a summary and whenever because your teaching notes will it's like suppose uh, you have designed a case and you are only teaching then you know how to teach it right. So there may be possibly there may, may, may or may not be any use of teaching uh, teaching notes. But when your case is being taught across the world or across different B schools, uh, different colleges in India or abroad, then I think the teacher who is new to that particular case or to you know, how to do with uh, go with that case. I think that is very important that teaching note should be provided. So that teaching note should have uh, the learning objectives that what what objectives will be fulfilled uh, after the, the, uh, the this case class. And then very important is that uh, they should have a back suggestive background reading because if somebody some students want to explore more about uh, what has happened in that particular um, uh, means he wants to go deep vertically into a particular uh, type of learning, maybe some formula or some concept or who has defined this, who has said this or some theory. He want to build up some theory or he want to go deep into that theory, then suggestive background is very, very important. Then uh, we have to also prepare the assignment question and business and discussion question. So can anybody tell me those who have been using the assignment question and discussion question, what is the difference between the two? We have been uh, in different colleges uh, as uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mirnal and uh, ma'am apprised me that uh, uh, we have been using cases. So what is the difference between the two types of question, assignment question and discussion question? And what is the basic difference between the two? Anyone, ma'am? We have with us uh, um, participants from uh, the college and other colleges also. Anyone from among the participants who would like to answer this question? Hello? Any? Yeah. Uh, Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, according to me, uh, so far as discussion uh, is concerned, discussion is spontaneous. Whatever ideas uh, you are getting spontaneously using your analytical ability or you, using your mental ability, that may be uh, the uh, discussion question. And assignment, in, in assignment questions, uh, you can take help of uh, uh, the different type of literature uh, or other uh, to prepare a particular assignment. Uh, I think uh, what's your good name? Uh, my myself is Professor Sunil Agarwal. Yeah, yeah, Professor Sunil ji. Uh, uh, I think 50% uh, of the justification is okay. Anyone else will listen to other arguments also. Thank you so much. Okay. So may I try? Yeah, please. So the assignment questions could be like the ones you gave uh, probably will have uh, definite answers. Uh, and, uh, actually, I'm not just hold on. I'm not a, just hold on. I'm not able to actually uh, see the name who is speaking. I, I usually. Uh, Sir, I'm Pooja uh, Jain. Uh, OK. Pooja Jain. Okay, now I could see your speaker. It is unmuted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so, sir, assignment questions could Dr. be uh, which probably have uh, you know uh, particular answers, specific answers, and uh, which uh, you know help yeah. the learners to pick the answers from the case study straight away. And these could be given in advance. Mm. Whereas discussion questions mm. uh, could be which are to which are meant to be discussed in the class itself and which can have different perspectives and alternatives for discussions. Whereas assignment questions will have, I think, specific answers like the ones you gave us. Mm. Uh, I think this is very near to the right answer. Now, assignment question is something which has which can be clearly answered based on the things which are given in the case. Like whatever questions I have given to you, they are the direct questions. And all the things that who was the person who answered to assistant professor Joe firstly. So it is given clearly. The program name was given. The subject name was given. So anything which is given in the case means whose direct answer is given in the case that we say is an assignment question or we can also say assignment questions are homework questions yeah and discussion questions are classwork questions classwork questions means the question which initiate the discussion and our today's session is mainly on the discussion question you will be Today, you will be, I have given you assignment questions, but for the case, you will be writing the discussion questions and you will be initiating the discussion today in the next session. That is going to happen. So is discussion question clear? Discussion question is a question which the teacher will ask in the class and initiate the discussion and move on with the case. Maybe, let me make you very clear. When I in 2010, when I was in Harvard, they said that this is the pedagogy of asking questions, especially the discussion questions. This was the pedagogy patented by the Harvard. I, I, I said, no, it can't happen. And everybody was looking at me. I said that it happened thousands of years ago in Gita. When Arjuna was having a confusion, then Krishna said, OK, you ask the question and I'll answer your question. So even in the Indian literature, Indian mythology, it is clear that this is going to be, or this is the best pedagogy of clearing the concepts. You can take the example of Krishna and Arjuna. And now it is so popular. And on the other side, the modern world says that we have created it, but I say that no. We have already been into this kind of pedagogy since last thousands of years. So discussion question, once you ask that question, it should initiate the discussion between the, dif the, the, the different uh, participants or the students. Now, what I do is... Uh, sir, may I add something here? Yeah, please. Yeah, Sir, uh, yeah. can we say that discussion questions are more probing in nature where we want to uh, find out how much uh, understanding has gone into the uh, students? Like you said that their basics yeah, should be have... clear. Yeah. So if we want to see very whether true. they are clear about words, the true. basics of management. So we put uh, we ask them probing questions like mm. what is planning, what is organizing, what is directing. And if we give them a case uh, of such nature where they try to find out whether the planning was uh, right or wrong. You know, I think that can be put into the uh, into the bracket of discussion questions. Very true. Very true. I think uh, you have done my work. Thank you so much. Because my next question from the participant was that how would you judge that uh, which is an which is a uh, assignment question and which is a discussion question? So when we design a question. What, when, then it becomes an assignment question. But when we design a question with how, why, then it becomes a discussion question. Because when we talk about, when we start a question with why or how, definitely it will lead to a discussion. 
and we'll be talking about that uh, what should be what should not be in the discussion question what should not be in the discussion question but before that what i what i will do is i'll share uh, the screen in which uh, i'll show you that uh, how the case goes on and uh, how the teaching notes goes on just show you on the screen so that you can have an idea of the case and the uh, many of you may be using cases and using teaching notes as all 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 um, you said that and also i would like uh, one of you to share his case or his teaching notes here in the session so that uh, you have two uh, two contrast means uh, one by the resource person but like me i have shared my case and the teaching notes how it is being prepared and uh, uh, one by the participant so be ready for that so what i'll i'll share my screen and uh, i'll stop this and i'll share my screen in which uh, uh, what i'll do is uh, mm, browse my computer i'll share that until then i think uh, either dr minal or dr geeta bansal or anyone if you can uh, be ready with uh, your case and just to have a glimpse that's all the no other purpose for that and uh, uh, we can have then are you able to see my case uh, is it um sir as yet uh, we are able to see your ppt only the one that you shared earlier only ppt yes sir uh, uh do i i think uh, i need to stop presenting that and then select another one or yes sir that is sure good. about that huh is it like that yes sir you have to stop Now, sharing this one is it one. visible no sir okay i have to first stop sharing my the ppt uh, yeah okay okay it has stopped now and now i have to select center more stand out normally it takes from the screen whatever we have opened so but it is asking to go to the computer first which is sir if you can assist sir uh, or he needs your help uh is should i if i if i am if i am ready with the, that file opened so will it I show so. or i have to go to the main file and then open it see you have to share i think you have to share that window in which that file is open if share window option is there window option is there okay let me check again because that's what that's what i i need uh, there should be a window option in that while sharing so while sharing content window option is there okay yeah i could get it now yeah it is there window option is there so now i think it is visible yes sir it is visible the case is visible yes sir okay so you 
you could see this case. Uh, this is the case which I was talking about the social entrepreneurship with Vedic wisdom. And uh, although it's not a very big case, the case still uh, it is of 11 pages in which uh, uh, I talked about. We'll will not go into deep into the case. I was just trying to show you the glimpse that. So I'll just show you the glimpse of the, the, this case and then mainly I'll be focusing on uh, uh, this is these are the resources which I have put notes also because and there is a very interesting story about its publication because when I I, I have uh, I tried to publish with uh, IV publication the Canada so they said that it is not possible to publish this case. Why? Because we don't accept uh, a saint doing a business because it was of Ramdev. And, uh, and and they said that our students in Canada and uh, especially in this in this part of the world, they won't accept this idea. So it was rejected there. And uh, even with Emerald, when they said that uh, whatever facts it was a very long case with all audit sheets, balance sheets and all that. But when I approached Patanjali again that I want to publish your balance sheets also. So they 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 said we won't allow that. Then I talked to Imran again and they said that you can uh, you should publish only based on, on whatever we, what have already been published in the secondary data. So I had to at the last moment I had to cut my case into 11 pages only, although it was of almost uh, 18 to 19 pages. But let me now. Uh, focus on uh, the teaching notes. Is my teaching note visible now? Yes, sir. Your teaching notes are visible and there are uh, so, and on and off some hands are being raised. So now one person that is Harpreet Kaur, she has raised her hand. I don't know whether she wished to say something. But is if you can unmute okay. her. Right, sir, has already been given. Harpreet, ma'am, uh, you can unmute yourself and speak up if you have a question. It's okay, sir. You can continue. I think she has mistakenly. I think she, she must have raised hand to answer the assignment question of assistant professor Joe. Am mm -hmm. I right? <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, I was talking about uh, these teaching notes, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is hard. So I was talking about that you need to write an abstract here. This is the abstract, and then there are Case, case learning objectives in which I, I wrote that basic understanding of entrepreneurial journey, journey, qualities of social entrepreneur, entrepreneur growth and expansion opportunities, brand building, value creation, social activism and public relation. And potential use of case is also very, very important because if you are not able to express the potential use of the case, then the publisher will not publish it. Then you can see that so much of background reading is there. So although the concept was from India, but I could find lot many background readings and then we, we need to give a conceptual background of the case also. Then the, these are the discussion questions. So and you have to write in teaching notes that what questions the teacher will ask in the class because only as an author you will be knowing that what type of discussions questions are to be written. And these are the key, key issues in the case and the, you have to give a teaching plan also. So I'll come to this part uh, teaching plan and this is the most important aspect of case teaching which we are going to discuss today and uh, ideally what will happen that. Uh, see here. Then. You need to define. Are you able to see my PPT now? Sir, it's a teaching plan uh, as a part of your case, which is visible. I think PPT has to be shared again. If you want to show that. Okay. So the other option that I can uh, think of is uh, you can share your screen and parallel. You can share your PPT as well as your case. That's what I'm doing now. That's what I'm doing now. I'm That's sharing my screen visible, because this time for sharing, I uh, have chosen that I should share my screen. I'll see again. Stop sharing. It is saying so I. I uh, what I'll do again, I'll check that if I have shared my screen. Screen OK and. 
Uh, are you able to see now my PPT? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the part of my uh, PPT, and uh, I'll I'll show this, and then I'll show the real uh, uh, teaching notes that what what has been written there. So we choreographing a case means that in a class, the first five to ten minutes, if we are saying that the class may be of uh, one hour to one and a half hour or 45 minutes to one and a half hour. You, it depends upon the teacher also. And also uh, you can request to your HOD or the class coordinator or the timetable in charge that, OK, today I'll be going for two classes together. Because what I think is that uh, when you go in a flow in a case teaching, then definitely 40 minutes, 30 minutes, they are quite less. And or else what you can do is you can take case into two classes or three classes like that. But it depends upon that what kind of feedback you are getting from the students and how they feel about going case either in one go or in in parts that depends upon the class to class. So five to ten minutes of the initially you have to talk about the background that uh, uh, why why this case uh, you are dealing with and what its background, how it's an unsolved issue and from which industry and this and that. And then you have to describe the essential features of a case. Um, and then you have to come to the, the theoretical uh, underpinning that what concept, like when I said that when I was, I was um, when we are teaching, teaching the Patanjali case, then social entrepreneurship, that is the theoretical underpinning and how social entrepreneurship can go on. What are the essentials of social entrepreneurship? How one can do social entrepreneurship? That is to be taught uh, what we say as a theoretical entrepreneur. Then you have to compare and contrast that. OK, somebody may agree that, OK, what Baba Ramdev did was good. What was not good? Why it was good? Why it was not good? Then you have some qualitative and quantitative analysis relating to the arguments of different students. And then in last five to ten minutes, you have to summarize. So if you see total, then it may be two, two and a half hours exercise. So either it can be done in in one period or it can be done in two two different uh, periods. So uh, if I show you the really what how I uh, in my teaching notes, how I defined is that that introduction to the discussion and then you define uh, social entrepreneur and describe essential fe feature of social enterprise in which you have to uh, address that. What were the qualities of Swami Ramdev that helped him to lay foundation for Patanjali Yogpeet? And then leadership and organizing resources which means that you have to uh, discuss how resources of social enterprise can be generated through motivation of followers, donors and public in social entrepreneurship. And then you have to talk about the value creation, branding that and you have to give live examples in teaching notes that that how actually he did because until unless whatever you are giving in a teaching plan, it, it has been uh, it is, it is it is being supported by what you have written in the teaching notes. And let me tell you the teaching notes content is totally different from the case content. Totally different and uh, the challenge for growth and diversification because there you are talking about th this is the material for students and teaching note is a material for teachers. So if you see this and then uh, discuss the challenge for growth, diversification and sustainability in social business what we did as a topic four for 20 minutes. And so if you see, if you go down, then definitely this is the topic one, how we described and they give, then we gave the background of that discussion in, in the class and then discussion, uh, discuss the reasons for recognizing Ram, Ramdev as a social entrepreneur, that why someone should, what is the qualities of a social entrepreneur and how he became a social entrepreneur then leadership and organizing resources, what I told 20 to 30 minutes, then you have to talk about that, what was his background. So the teacher should always be knowing about all these things. Few of things may be given in the case and a few of the things may not be given in the case. It is only in the teaching notes because then it is only for teachers and you are giving to the class that, okay, these are the three or four uh, online links or the leads which you have to come prepared tomorrow for a discussion in the class. You cannot give in the case. So you have given in the teaching notes and this is how socializing, promotion, branding. Are you able to see my teaching notes now? 
ma'am is it visible yes sir they what i am saying are you able to see yeah, yes yeah. sir so socializing promoting branding distribution and value creation so this is how uh, challenges for growth diversification and uh, sustainability so you will see that uh, there are few questions and i have given answer to that also what other option did ramdev have to fulfill his mission so i have as a teaching note i have given its answer also and uh, because uh, without that it is not possible that uh, 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 without that it is not possible that the teacher may may be knowing what is happening there so with this uh, i would say that uh, let's come back to my presentation now uh, now you have to uh, make students prepare about the case uh, so you have to you have to ask for four pre's means you need that you need to make students prepare and do a follow up and then ask for their real presence in the class even they are if if they are absent from the class then there is no use of using a case and then you you need to uh, ask them to be prompt that whenever you ask a question they should be ready for answering that and then that is only pos possible when you are making them prepare a case right and uh, uh, but as a teacher as a teacher i would say that you need to go beyond because your students are preparing for case but you need to go beyond preparing the case to teach you need to go through the case you need to go through the teaching notes and uh, uh, you you need to maintain the ownership of the discussion in the class and uh, we will also be talking about that what assistant professor jo what kind of problem actually assistant professor jo faced we all know about because we have read that case and how we will solve that issue we'll come to that part so and it should not happen that uh, the case should drift only in one direction it will go out of your control and uh, the main themes uh, uh, to to manage the discussion the topics or the analysis that should be included into your discussion parts and also should be including included in your uh, the way you ask the question the way you design the question designing of a question the discussion question is very very important um, and uh, when you type when you ask a particular type of question it means that it's a quiz type of question sometimes it is a debate type of question sometimes you just want a uh, a single point answer for that so it depends upon that uh, what for what purpose you have designed a question and possibly when you have not designed a question then uh, um, maybe um, uh, you, you you are using the standard teaching notes of somebody else so that is also possible now one thing which is very very important is the use of the uh, board and uh, when we are doing virtually actually i am really noting down that uh, dr pooja jain professor sunil dr dilraj kaur i have asked dr geeta bansal dr minnal i have asked these many people then they have actually responded so i am doing on my paper now virtually but this should actually happen when you are teaching in a class it should you should write on the board that which student had given which kind of answer because most of the time you are Uh, asking the students that okay hari said like this and varun said like this then you are asking the third person that okay how do you feel how how uh, means uh, what is your argument for that do you agree with them do you, you do you agree with harish or do you agree with the other person so that is also very important and uh, using humor constructively so that there should not be a boredom that is also very very important in the class then uh the body language uh, is also very important uh, uh, because the pace with which you manage the class or you come most of the time uh, the students are able to guess whether you are prepared with the case and or the not whether you are prepared with your discussion questions or not but and let me make you very very clear that if you are not really prepared with the case and with the teaching notes 
definitely one is going to fail. So uh, if I say that the students do 100%, then you have to do 200% for a case teaching class. Otherwise, uh, that's why it is not getting so popular in India because our pedagogy has been lecture based since last so many years. Although I have already argued that this is the best pedagogy and Gita in Gita, Arjuna and uh, Sri Krishna have already used this pedagogy for clearing the concepts. And uh, once you reach to that height that students start arguing with each other, then definitely we would say that yes, now uh, the height that means the class is, is the best at the at its best stage when you keep quiet and students they start um, discussing among themselves. So uh, when uh, how do you know that the succeeding in the case teaching and uh, I would say the height is that uh, when somebody or student has passed out and uh, after two years or three years or four years of passing out, uh, the student says, uh, calls you or send an email that uh, I have been facing a situation in, uh, in my company and the situation is almost same. What you dealt in the class, you guided me and uh, uh, this is almost the same kind of situation and thank you sir because with the with your case class now i am capable enough to handle this situation but uh, i thought to call you and thank you and that is the pleasure that is the reward what a teacher really gets when uh, from case teaching when his his passed out students calls after two years for thanking you that you have used cases in the class. So as far as my PPT is concerned, this was the only only this much. And now uh, what I will do is. Uh, uh, I'm again open and I'll stop uh, sharing this. And uh, up to this part, if you have any argument, you have any question. Uh, because almost I am done with my PPT now. We are going into the practical phase where I uh, will uh, be asking few questions and then you will be uh, going for uh, a class discussion, right? So, but if you have any queries uh, till this time, you can ask. From my Patanjali case or my PPT or anything else. Sir, I think we are yet to start the class discussion. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, good afternoon, sir. This is Monica Sethi. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Uh, sir, my question is with regard to the publishing part of the case. Like you were sharing in this mm. uh, Patanjali <clears throat> case that you had uh, faced problem regarding pub uh, mentioning the uh, balance sheet portion of uh, that company. So uh, because these financial statements are there in the public domain, they are published. So yes. still you need to take the permission from the respective corporate uh, to even show the yes, extracts we need or to publish an article for that. Uh, still it is in public domain then. Yeah, ma'am, publisher asked for that. Publisher asked for that. And what mm -hmm. happened that after which after when my with my email request, the Patanjali actually removed those balance sheets from the website. And it was surprising for me. Okay. Right. Uh, because uh, my cases which I have written, they were all accounting finance based. So I have all, always used the data, secondary data from uh, the annual reports or the uh, website of the company. Did you, so did you, publish, did you publish that? No, case? I, I, I did not. I did not publish them. They were to be, you know. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that's I'm saying point. that uh, if you are, if you are suppose uh, because most of the uh, things are available on NSC or BSC site or moneycontrol.com or capital line or Proves. Uh, mm -hmm. all the financial data uh, these because these are the repositories which are having that data but still when you publish something uh, then and and you you have to uh, the the company may ask you that what is the reason for publishing that and when you state that I need to use it as a case and 
it will be distributed across the world and the discussion will be there on that so possibly they may agree or they may not agree but if you are not publishing that then i think uh, that is not an issue right sir thank you yeah now i would like uh, some uh, internal faculty or from the participants if uh, they can uh, screen their sh uh, they can share their screen and they can show the case uh, uh, they have been teaching and their teaching notes and uh, if they can show that uh, how uh, the objectives and the 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 discussion questions they have given and all discussion questions they have answered in the teaching notes because if the teacher is not knowing the answer then it is really difficult for a teacher to teach a case in the class so i would request any one of you who can uh, who have been using case and he or she has designed his case or even if she has not made that case or she has been using the case of somebody else some international or national level publisher has published that and you have been using that case in the class so uh, i just wanted to have a glimpse of what tool you have been using in the class and except that till uh, that person comes here and share uh, his or her screen any other question from your side Yes. Any questions from any of the participants? So now the participants or any of the resource uh, means uh, uh, okay. the organizers, if they have any case, they can share the screen here so that uh, uh, one was my view of looking at uh, the case and the teaching notes. So we can have another view of uh, looking into the case and the teaching notes. People may arrange, maybe uh, they're not ready with those cases that they've written, so they may take time or maybe after the break we can okay. uh, ask so them. We can do that in the second session also. Yeah. So I may like to uh, uh, continue with the, the, the uh, not with the discussion question, but the assignment question. Or would you like me to start the session with the discussion because it's a long journey and uh, let me tell you that uh, you are 52 people who are the attendees and ex except that we have eight people as organizers or the uh, uh, so uh, till this time i have only six people dr minal uh, dr geeta uh, dr dilraj professor sunil dr puja dr monika sethi who have spoken but uh, in my session till it ends uh, till the end of the day uh, I am expecting all 52 of you to speak on and uh, uh, let me start with the um, with someone or even you can raise hand if you don't raise hand I'll ask so my uh, now I'll give you a situation now the situation is that uh, um, till this time uh, you have been listeners and i have been speaking right i was there are two hats one is teacher hat and one is student hat so till this time you are you were wearing the uh, student's hat and i was wearing the teacher's hat now what i will do is what i am inviting you for is that i want and every one of you have to do it now i may be i'm inviting you to wear the teacher's hat now and you have to act as Professor Pankaj Madan in this group as a teacher. And you have given Assistant Professor Joe Case to the group. And you have to conduct this class now. Are you getting my point? I'll again make it clear because it takes some time to understand this concept. You are not Assistant Professor Joe. Please don't act as assistant professor Joe. No, what I am saying is. You have to be you have to come at my place. My place means you will be the teacher. Any one of you and then then the teacher role will change. So one will become teacher rest. All of us will become uh, uh, students and then you have to. Open a question. You have to ask a question or start this class or continue with this class with the discussion is this point clear like how you teach physically today you have to teach virtually in this workshop 
so i invite you to be the resource person today and the case which you have distributed is the case of assistant professor joe and now you have to run this case class any one of you can initiate there should not be a silence ma'am uh, i have half an hour in this session now it should end at yes. 1:30 right so i think uh, you have to end by now i think uh, it's 1 to 2 right. is break time 1 to 2 is okay. the break time and oh, we can reassemble yes sir okay we can reassemble at 2 o'clock yes sir no my timing was 2 or it was 3:30 uh, 3:30 yes. sir up to 3:30 up to 2 to 3:30 na yes sir okay so we'll uh, we will reassemble at 2 o'clock but uh, you need to be very very attentive in this 1 hour so while doing your lunch you have to be prepared as a teacher now please don't be till this time you have been student you have been reading that case so what i am giving you a new assignment now i am saying no you are in the next class you are not going to be a student you have to be a teacher you have to design your own discussion question you have to come here as a resource person and start the discussion and if somebody is coming at the second place third place or fourth place don't repeat that question was first person has done so you should get uh, at least uh, five to six questions ready while doing your lunch and then we will start the discussion and if somebody and the rule is that if someone doesn't initiate i will ask okay madam manpreet kaur please be the resource person and start the discussion i may ask that okay uh, ma'am gurleen kaur to come and start the discussion so we will be wearing the teacher's hat and we will be meeting after the lunch so is it okay ma'am sure sir i okay. hope the participants will be ready by then <laughs> yes <laughs> so we'll meet at 2 o'clock ma'am sure sir sure thank yeah. you sir thank you thank you, thank you. I hope the participants are clear. We will reassemble at two.